So after five hours of hard work, you're finally ready to render your product. So you go to compose this sick image and it looks like absolute garbage. So where the hell did you go wrong? Maybe you should just go print out your image. Take it and go post it on your fridge because it's just a piece of crap. Do you even know anything about 3D art? Dude, you should quit. Just kidding. It's actually really simple and it's something that you can do in under 10 minutes. The first thing you want to do is jump out of your camera and then we're actually going to change the resolution of our camera so that we have a vertical output um, because we're going to actually focus on a detail instead of the entire cup as a scene. So we're going to go in here, change it to a nice vertical, a good camera vertical viewport for our detailed image. So instead of showcasing this cup kind of like this in a scene where it's just kind of swimming within a scene, and there's all this empty space, we're actually just going to focus on a detail of this cup because as you can see what I've done here is I've added kind of a logo, it's a little pixelated up here, but I've added a logo to the handle of this cup and I think it looks pretty cool, so I'm gonna highlight that. So I'm actually gonna go in here, I'm just gonna delete this ground because we don't need it. And then I'm going to focus in on the cup. So I want it really close. But before we do that, we're actually going to change it from perspective to orthographic, so everything's straight. Um, as you can see with the perspective, we have a 50 millimeter, which is uh, traditionally kind of the standard view, but it's still warping because we're getting so close, the camera's getting so close to our scene here. We could turn it to like, uh, say 150 millimeters. Traditionally in product photography, you'd probably use like an 85 to a 105 millimeter lens. For this, we could do that and get very close, but I actually just want to use an orthographic view that'll just keep everything t nice and straight. So now that we have that orthographic up, we are going to focus on this handle. This handle needs to do two things. It needs to be lit well when we put our light in or our non-light figure in, and then it needs to separate from the mug. So it needs to look like this and not like this. So we're gonna give it an angle here. We're actually gonna grab everything and just rotate that itself. Something like, just kind of play with it until you like what's happening here. I think that looks good. Let's just look at that. Okay, so here I like this. I actually like this lighting. Um, we've abstracted it. Uh, so we don't see the trees anymore. We don't see the entire uh, HDRI that was in the back and we get this blue light that comes across and then it creates a gradient across the handle here, which is nice, it's not bad. It's basically what we're gonna have, but we're gonna have a more professional studio-like setup. So in our world shader here, instead of using this HDRI, which I used here, just uh, something from HDRI Haven, we're actually gonna switch that to a Yeti logo. And this is the logo I used to actually make these uh, graphics here on the handle and on the cup. Like right there. So it's just a black and white value, which in your world shader will act like light. So the white areas will be a plus one value and it'll act like a light. So. We're just gonna plug that in and voila, we have a studio like, like a strip box going vertical. Um, we have that set up. We didn't have to create any lights. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like out here. It's literally just the Y, the E, the T, and the I of Yeti. And it's just wrapping around your cup. So like again, traditionally in photography, this is too many highlights. You don't really want all three of these highlights there. We'd kind of want separation. But for this, we're zooming in, so it doesn't really matter. But what we do want is some light kind of around this handle like we had before. And then we also want this background to peel our product away from it. So we're gonna change it to black. But we don't need to actually change anything. We just need to move our environment shader around, which you probably already know how to do. But if you don't, you're just going to go into your shading tab here and you're going to add a mapping and a texture coordinate. If you don't know how to do this, you can just hit command uh, T and then we're gonna go in we're going to actually go in the rendered view just to see where it's at and then we're just gonna rotate it until you can kind of see these these uh, highlights are shifting here I'm just gonna keep rotating rotating it 
there we go. So now we have the black and we want kind of a separation on that handle. That looks all right. Uh, how about that? All right, so in like under, I don't know, like five minutes, we have a professional studio-like setup um, by, actually, we're gonna change it a little bit, but in under five minutes, you have a professional studio setup for your product, uh, which looks like you're using strip boxes. It makes it look like you know what you're doing. It works perfect on reflective objects like this, and you can render this out and kind of bring it into Photoshop, change anything else you want but this will do wonders for highlighting specific regions or uh, parts of your product. Instead of doing an entire like uh, scene for your product, which just takes away from the product completely because we don't really need to see negative space. We don't need an emotive render. Uh, if you're gonna create an emotive render, then you need to do a lot more work than just putting an HDRI behind it and putting it on a flat surface. So get in the habit of just zooming in to your product on the important parts and then if you need to zoom out, uh, do it in a more considered way, but maybe I'll make a video on that too. So uh, for this quick tutorial, all you have to do is plug in a black and white value. You can create any black and white value picture you want in Photoshop, plug it into your environment shader, and you'll have a professional looking uh, scene for your product.